Don't blink. Don't blink. You don't want to miss it. Life is happening. And it's happening right now. Becoming a bow hunter has been great. It's made me much more of an observer. And it's allowed me to get close to big bucks over the last few years. And shoot my fair share as well. I've had great experiences. But most of them have been solo. How about that? But that's just the way it is. It takes time and a lot of effort to find mature bucks, to get up every single day, and it takes resilience to pass them. Especially in the Northeast, where big bucks are hard to find. I find myself observing bucks, even in places I can't hunt, but I can't look away. Just watching what they do, watching smaller bucks learn how to fight from bigger bucks, because they know the big bucks will die and one day they'll turn into a big buck. And after all the searching, all the detective work, sometimes you find a buck in a place you can hunt that changes everything. I found this buck in 2021, and this was his rack on June 9th. I couldn't believe it. I'd never seen a buck with that big a rack that early on in the season. I was obsessed. I got hundreds of pictures of him, great videos, and I set out to try to kill him. I set a stand up in this big public land piece over this scrape, put a couple of cell cameras out, and I stayed out of the area. And then one cold front morning, I got this picture, and I went in to hunt that stand. Got in here around 6.50, and got up here just in time for shooting light. It's now 7.30. I don't really like hanging on stands. I'm up here pretty high, but we'll figure out how to get down after I shoot this big buck if he comes through. I wish I could have got all that on film. That was insane. I pulled out the rattle horns and it rattled for 30 seconds. And immediately, those bucks, four bucks came in. They must have been only 50 yards away when it started rattling. Came crashing down the hill. I couldn't get anything on film. Two pretty mature bucks came down first. And I looked behind and there was the big monster, monster nine pointer was coming in. And he was only about 40 yards when I first saw him, but I don't have any shots. He never gave me a shot, but he came in and he, he stood down here for about 25 minutes sniffing in the air. My wind, it was kind of going in that direction, but maybe it went over him. But he was sniffing, 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 taking his time. He got to within 30 yards, but I, he absolutely didn't give me any shots. He kept everything in between me and him. But anyway, he didn't spook. He just slowly walked up the hill. I watched him walk away. I did get a tiny, tiny bit of film as he was walking away. But I think he's just gone up there to bed. I rattled again and uh, Spikehorn came charging down the hill and just walked in front of me about 15 yards. 
After a rattling sequence and watching some smaller bucks fighting, there he was. He was about 40 yards away and marching in, but he was looking in my direction and he kept everything he could between him and me and never gave me a shot. Stood behind a big pine tree for 30 minutes without moving, knowing something was up. And when he finally decided to walk away, wouldn't you believe it, he kept that big pine tree right between me and him. And after that, I never saw him again. Some big bucks are so smart that when they sense danger in an area, they gone and they're not coming back. Over the years, I scouted this place again, put cameras in there, but he never showed up. And I wondered what had happened to him. I figured he died, got shot or hit by a car and just died a lonely death somewhere. But little did I know, I'd have another run in with him. I ended up shooting two grade eight pointers in 2021. And then after shifting focus in 2022 away from the big nine, it forced me to find some new places, scout some new areas, and it brought me to this buck in 2022 yes. that I killed the first week of the season. I just watched him fall. That's the eight that I uh, didn't get a shot at last time. He was a great eight pointer and I was happy to put him on the wall, but even better yet, I found a new location that I would focus some more time on. And after this one, I didn't get another buck with a bow, but I was excited to walk out into the gun season with the tag in my pocket. I walked up on this buck, bedded, and was able to see him in his rack moving around, and I decided to wait, wait him out by this tree until he finally stood up and gave me a shot. I didn't know it yet, but this buck actually shed his horns when I shot him. How about that, huh? I had to find his sheds and bring them back to him. But I felt great getting my first buck with a gun since I became a bow hunter. And then came 2023 and a new buck that I'd become obsessed with. But I first saw this buck September 1st and he was in the area that I was forced to scout in 2022 after I lost track of the big nine. So going to that new area brought me a new amazing buck to look for. First morning where I'm making coffee. It is a risk, but I'm gonna enjoy my ride that much more. I would spend most of 2023 just waiting for him to come by. I hunted almost every single day. a lot of bucks, small bucks, medium sized bucks, I rattled, 
was definitely picking up, but the really big buck was nowhere to be seen. I hunted in bad weather. Here a doe bedded right behind me downwind. 35 yards away. Soon enough, a good buck was coming down the hill to check on the beds. You can see that one doe right there. She was bedded with another one. And this buck wanted nothing to do with her. He knew which one was in heat. He pushed her around for about five minutes. Then this buck came in. Live three more years, buddy. Here's the split brow buck that might have been three or four years old. Great buck. Passed him early on and saw him quite a bit. Finally, here comes a big buck. I need him to get over that rock wall over on my side before I can shoot. That root ball there is about 45 yards away. Once he crosses the rock wall, he's within about 30 yards. He was making his way straight down the rock wall, which is why I grunted him. Wanted to try to draw him over the other side. Here the grunt seemed to work and I thought he was coming right for the rock wall. He put his nose down there and I don't know what he was smelling. But all of a sudden, he doesn't like it. And just like that, the best opportunity of the season is gone. But the next day, I'd get a nice buck into bow range. I just saw a dog. and get some of my best rod activity of the year. I picked my bow up and had it in my hand because things can happen fast. This buck would put on a show. It's the same eight pointer that I've seen quite a bit. And now I go into observer mode. Back to hunter mode for a second.
this was such an amazing experience for me, just watching these two bucks interact, posture up, and watching nature unfold. I'm not going to shoot him either, but they're too close for me to risk hanging my bow back up, so the whole rest of this encounter, I'm holding on to it. Oh, don't be going over there towards my doe. stands guard and watches the little one walk away, eight yards below my stand. Mission accomplished. Eighteen minutes later, he's still right there with that doe, but he's keeping an eye on me. He was basically begging me to shoot him. But he's just not what I'm looking for. I continued to hunt hard the rest of bow season, bouncing around to a couple different places. After I found out my big 13 pointer got killed, basically abandoned that area and started focusing on this new spot and another big buck after a few weeks of hunting there and not seeing him he got killed then I found out the split brow buck that I wanted to live who had so much potential got killed too well that's the way it goes and for the first time since I started bow hunting, I'd go the entire season without releasing an arrow. And well, let's just say, I was excited to go into the gun season with two tags in my pocket. Get back to my roots. And on opening day, where else should I go but back to that large patch of public land where I lost track of that big nine-pointer. Pretty morning on gun season. So many years ago. Rained all night. It's supposed to be really windy today, so I'm gonna sit for the first hour and a half. And then get up and still hunt today as long as the wind picks up. Right now it's not too windy. Feels good to have the woodman arms out. Just heard a big uh, big stick break over there. be another hunter coming in, but let's hope it's a buck. Yeah, it's hunters. Well, I guess that's gun season for you. But now I see where they're walking. I'm gonna try to get to a spot where they might kick something up to me. I still hunted the rest of that morning. And at about 11 o'clock, I was still hunting up a hill. I saw a doe standing there broadside, and I saw some tines on the other side of the ridge. Oh my gosh. After about eight minutes, a big, <sighs> wide, 
ten-pointer. I don't know if I hit that buck. Crested the ridge. I gotta reload. Yes, I do. All I could see was his neck. That was the most crazy, intense standoff. All right, I'm gonna reload and go up there, but he might he might have just dropped right there. I had a neck shot. There was a doe standing right on the, on the ridge. I was just walking up this hill. I'm on a main path here. I should be reloading. Walking up this hill. And uh, I was sweating, just kind of, you know, it's pretty steep. Later I'd find out, devastatingly, that this was the giant nine-pointer. Oh, right there. I, I need to reload. That I'd lost so many years ago. Now, right before this, I attempted my first reload, but I couldn't find all of my tubes as they were in different pockets. I was looking for my bullets. I put my woodman arms between my legs, gun tipped down, and all the powder came out. So this was my second reload. He got up and moved a little bit. He was pushing himself across the ridge. Looked like his front half was paralyzed. Gave me plenty of broadside shots. Right now he's laying there. And I'm just trying to keep an eye on him. I think I got him. <sighs> but I should be reloading faster. That's it. Take your time. Right now, he's getting up out of that last bed and he's slowly walking away. I don't know why I'm taking my time. Part of me wanted to keep an eye on him. The other part of me was in awe. The last part of me thought, there's no way he's going to survive anyway. Let him walk over that hill. He's very slowly moving right now, but still giving me shots. Hindsight. Just cresting the hill. And as I lift my rifle, the tines are descending over the other side. Oh well, he'll be dead over there. I saw him walk over that hill slowly. I'm gonna have to get up there and see, see what I can see. Oh, he walked up over a hill. Slowly, I couldn't get reloaded. The freaking orange vest over my jacket was covering up a pocket. I couldn't get freaking reloaded. I'm gonna fix that. I followed up over that hill to see if I could uh, see him anywhere. Took my time getting up over it. Got, de got down into the valley a little bit. <laughs> You know, just 20 yards the other side of the hill, found some blood. And I was just slowly making my way there, and then I heard him either crash or get up and run again. I don't know where he is. And <sighs> Next shot, it's not a lot of blood. So I'm not feeling awesome now about this. But he could just be dead here somewhere. I need to, need to look around. I'm shedding stuff. <laughs> shedding my jacket. It's hot. I left my pack way back there. I grid searched Hope I get him. for two days doing my diligence looking for that buck but didn't find him. But I eventually was contacted by a landowner that lived nearby and he'd been watching that buck for a long time and he confirmed to me what buck it was. It was the Big Nine from 2021. The landowner been watching him for so many years, he estimated the buck was 10 years old, maybe 11. And he was going downhill, 
but he was still a big, wide, majestic ten-pointer. The landowner sent me videos of the buck two days later, acting just fine. So he survived, and maybe I'll get to catch up with him next year. But now I get to hunt with some buddies. Maybe that'll change the luck a little bit. We were a four-person team going into a quabbin hunt, and we had a heck of a time. Ah, oh, man, what a guy. Found his damn he's right there. With high hopes, I went in deep. Oh, gosh, I don't know what to do now. But it wasn't deep enough. You couldn't get away from people. Oh, great, now we got another guy walking through. With tons of hunters walking around, I got up and I did the same. I spent most of my first day just trying to get away from people. I still hunted. I still saw quite a few deer. And I held out hopes that I'd see a buck. Oh, that's the end of uh, Quabbin Day 1. And even though the first day didn't go the way that I had thought, I still had a great day. Kevin Polis, one of my great friends, would cap it off with a nice buck. Oh, baby, baby. Buck down. Buck down. You shot one with the muzzle loader. <laughs> what a deer, man. Congrats. Thanks. That's awesome. Thanks. Let's take a look. Wow. You think 185, Chris? That's my guess. He was heavy. Trying to get him out he's of there. Not Whoa. super long, but he's fat. Neck. What a beauty, Kevin. He's got a little worm hole in him. Yep, and I can smell him. Super rutted, huh? Dude, talk about a horrible season changing in five. That's not proof this last week. <laughs> Absolute suck season changing in like five or six days. <laughs> you didn't see anything in that clear cut, huh? No, I didn't sit there for too long now. Are you coming back tomorrow? I'll go to that clear cut with you. Kevin, you coming back tomorrow? He's tagged yeah. out. Tagged oh, you're tagged out now? Yeah. Oh, I forgot you I shot one. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, the one way. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to be here alone, so you better come right. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in for tomorrow. Look, Kevin. You're deer. Yeah, don't worry. I'll film it for you, Kev. <laughs> it's always a good sign for the weight. Quick, quick, hurry up! Before he moves. <laughs> I think you're good. Just barely. <laughs> <laughs> what were you guys all betting? 186. I was saying 189, but he has something too high. 177. Oh, we were off. Not by much. <laughs> nice deer, Kevin. Thanks. Day two of the Quabbin hunt. Today I'm in a stand, which I wish I was yesterday, and I'm in a big funnel that is scouted on Onyx, and it's just as nice as I hoped it would be when I got here. the sounds of my favorite bird, Pileated Woodpecker. There he is. Hopefully that's some good luck. Such a beautiful sound they make.
After shooting that buck, I left the camera rolling. But I was focused on the buck and reloading as fast as I could. So I didn't even see this buck. But it doesn't matter. I had finally accomplished what had been eluding me all season. Fulfillment. Oh my gosh. I just got the biggest buck of my life. And I'd get to share it with a buddy. Hunting solo is awesome. There's no denying that. But whenever you can share it with friends, Dude, it's great. absolute tank. It's always so much hey, better. Who is it? You walk. You must have walked by him. He died on the hill. You just came Are down. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Hey, guys. Let's go get it. All right. The camaraderie that I've been missing. Oh my god. Look at those hailers. I found it again with a gun in my hand. What a tank. Oh my god, what a beauty. So. Wow. Um. I was uh, I, I did an interview in the uh, in the stand where I, I mentioned that I had a tough week, and I learned some lessons, and uh, I would talk about it later. I didn't know I'd be talking about it with a really nice buck on the ground. You know the story anyway. Failure to redemption. Don't blink. Don't blink. Life happens today. Careful going down the stairs, okay? You want my hand? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Take my hand. Let's go. What do you think, dude? Is it big? To pull it out. But, but can you touch it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. Why? Right like this. Oh, there it is. Can you, can you touch him? Can yeah, we just gotta wash your hands when we go inside. Go ahead, you can touch him. Aww. You can touch his eye. No, well, go ahead, but. Why? You can go ahead. Like, can you touch his eyes or something? You can, buddy. We're just gonna go inside and wash, your, wash our hands, okay? But you can touch it. Oh! Yeah, weird, right? Yeah, you gotta have to wear the eye. Whatever you do, make sure you pass it on.